Hi everybody, hope you're well. This video is requested by Ponylover972, so I'm going to be doing an updated version on how to make aquas. And as always, if you have any other aquas sharing tips that you want to share in the comments, please do so. But please do make sure that they follow the horse rules, because we don't want to get anybody in trouble. So, as always, as I said, the main thing is to make sure your earnings on horse are higher than whatever costs you have. Now, I've gone here on to the aquas page. Now, you can, obviously, buy aquas with passes. And you can also get some aquas for free through some of these methods, such as the advertising videos. So that could be a way to just earn a little bit of aquas over time. Now, this financial history here is actually one of the most useful things to you. And you want to be making sure that your total earnings are higher than your total expenses. So I'm going to first talk about how to raise your aquas, and then I'm going to talk about how to keep your costs as low as possible. So the first thing, obviously, is making sure that you're selling horses for a profit. I mean, if you buy a horse that's going to take you a really long time to train up, for example, and it's cost you quite a bit to buy, it's probably not worth your time. It's better maybe buying a cheaper horse that you can sell quickly, okay, or a lot of them. Um, there's certain perks as well that will help you with this. Now, this is one of the things I want to mention. Now, you may not have these perks. But some of these things can potentially make it a little bit easier to earn Equus, but do be aware, obviously, you're having to spend passes to do that. So something like being able to offer three copies when training items, you might be able to sell more BM items that way. Um, you know, registering for horses and competitions automatically in one click, that means you could possibly get more competitions done because you're not having to go in and click each competition, you can just auto uh, enter. So we've also got a couple of other ones um, I want to have a look at as well. So something like bumping your horse sales in order to the top, that could be very helpful for selling horses if you want to keep your horses relevant um, in the sales, that is, could be useful to you. This one's a big one actually as well, purchase several horses or cancel several horses for sales at the time, um, because then you can put up lots of horses, especially if you're trying to sell a lot of horses for profit and maybe you're selling cheaper ones and you're selling them on for a little bit more and you're just put loads in sales that can be quite useful because you can put them up as quickly as possible um, automatic horse purchases I use this a lot um, whenever I was trying to raise Equus because it meant I could buy set sales basically to find horses so I didn't have to sit all day and buy the horses in that were cheap um, or certain ones that I wanted you know with certain skill sets whenever I could just automatically let um, horse do that for me so that can be quite handy as well um, I would say probably getting the right amount of food, pre-selected for your horses is another way of saving costs as well because you're not you know, going to overfeed or underfeed and I would say the other thing I'll just mention is increasing the chances of giving birth to a unicorn um, that might be handy because maybe you'll get more unicorns born to sell possibly so I just want to mention those you know be aware that some perks can help you in this in general but now I'm going to go into the main points so as I said, selling horses for profit, making sure that whenever you buy them, that they're worth buying and be aware of what you're buying. Have a look at the sort of ranges that horses sell for in the sales. Basically, whenever you're trying to price horses that you're buying in and you're selling, you want to be looking at things like their breed, their genetics, their color, um, their gender, for example, what BM items they have on them, maybe the age of them. Look at the things that give the value to the horse and then you can sort of have a look in sales, search, use this, you know, use the search features. I mean, if you want to try and get a rough idea of, you know, the value of certain horses in the direct sales, let's say we want to know how much horses over 15 who aren't immortal are worth, okay? We can quickly do that. Now, we are getting a lot of, you know, a variety of prices here, right? But we could maybe sort that out a bit more. Maybe we don't want them to cost any passes, okay? And then what we might decide is, okay, we're still getting our large range of prices there. Maybe we should sort them by highest to lowest, okay? Or lowest to highest, or vice versa. So this is one of the things to be aware of. Do this whenever you're looking to see if horses are worth buying, okay? Have a look at, you know, sort of the broad spectrum and compare them because, you know, certain things are going to make horses more expensive than other ones. I mean, if we have a look here, this cheapest one is 18 years old and it's on 75. But then we're going into a sort of higher range here. Some of them are up to 30 years old and some of them, you know, are a little bit less. So identify what horses are worth selling for profit. And one of the things, as I said, is entering when lots of contests and competitions daily with horses. And if you're using the 
you know, the auto perk with VIP, that's going to be a lot easier. One of the things that I would suggest is going for competitions with highest uh, kitty possible. So sort it by the kitty, um, because then you're more likely to get a larger chunk of Aquas. Rather than spending your time entering, you know, ones where you could only get up to nine, you know, which is a waste of your time. You'd be much better going for higher ones. And also some divines have much, much higher uh, kitties um, to be dished out for winning. So divines, if you have any, you know, put them into competitions. Um, entering the Grand Prix is another one. So it's worth doing. You know, you can do that most of the week. Um, you can't do it on Saturday and Sunday, but you can do it Monday through to Friday. So that's worth doing for a bit of Aquas there. Um, selling unwanted items, obviously, to the shop that you're not going to use, you know, you can be choosing from food and tack and resources and agriculture and enhancements and so forth. So just go into sell and you can sort it by what you have, um, stock and price wise and so forth. So another thing is selling coverings. So you can sell coverings from divines, from unicorns, uh, from higher genetic potential coverings. I usually find is best and what most players are going to go for. But maybe you have a divine stallion that uh, you could sell covers from. You know, if you were lucky enough um, to have one of the, those, you could sell some from that because some of them um, are going to be in demand for uh, breeding to some of the female ones. Uh, if you don't have a divine or a unicorn or maybe high genetic potential, maybe just look for breeds that are less uh, popular. Uh, you know, that don't have a lot on the game. So if we just go to achievements here, um, we'll go with best horses. Oh no, actually, we need to go to directories, that's where I was meant to go. So, if we click on horses, we can see what's the most popular breed on the server, right down to what's the least popular breed. So, certain breeds, which are rare, they're harder to get covers for, so people sometimes are willing to spend more. So, if you don't have some high genetic potential popular breeds, maybe go for um, selling some of the rarer covers, if you can get yourself uh, one of those horses. Um... Buying and selling horses in auctions can be easier, I think, sometimes as well. Can be a lot more time consuming though than, especially with VIP having made it so easy to do auto sales and, and directs. But auctions, you can sometimes really grab some bargains in there that are really worth um, getting. So just be aware of auctions, don't totally disregard them. Um, the other thing to be aware of is obviously to make sure you're doing your lessons and missions every day with your horses because it adds up over time, especially if you're working with a lot of them. So make sure you put your horse in doing equestrian center to do that and you'll get some equus. And obviously the higher the prestige of the equestrian center, the more equus you're going to get for doing those. So if you can get is into good ECs, you know, try and do that because you'll earn more from doing those missions and lessons. Um, if you have any of the following, so I'm going to show you these. So privileges like the eternal wealth privilege or the breeder's wealth. So breeder's wealth privilege offers 100 equus per day um, after the daily update provided you logged in the day before. And then the eternal uh, wealth privilege, it gives you 1,000 equus per day um, after the daily update provided you logged in every day. So make sure you're logging in every day to avail of that. Obviously you can get money from achievements and promotions as well. So some promotions will have that and some won't, so just be aware of um, cases where you will actually get some aquas from those. Um, another thing to bear in mind as well, several divines will offer you aquas for visiting them. Um, and some of them you don't need to own, um, so I'll have a look at those now. So if we go to the directories, click on horses, and I'm going to search topaz divine horses. So I'm going to visit five topaz and we're going to visit another one we're going to visit an exanthos as well and go for one of the newer exanthos so we congratulate the topaz we get a little bit of aquas or a diamond so win-win really and if you do that every day it just helps chip away at it and you may be thinking these are very small amounts, but if you're really looking to get as much as you possibly can, that's the best way to do it. So, the other thing is, if you actually own an Exanthos, which I do own an Exanthos, you actually will get uh, money as well. So, if we have a look here, 
So I've got, again with your Exanthos, so basically I have an Exanthos here. So the horse's owner receives 200 Equus from him when they log in for the first time per day. So if you own one, then you benefit from that as well. Um, if you own a Sapphire Divine, so if I can find my Sapphire Divine, there he is. Basically, if I visit the player that's here, so let's look for players. Okay, as you can see, by finding Sapphire, you've won 1,000 Aquas. Now, on other days, I will get a diamond instead, but it's still, it's quite a nice little amount, actually, compared to some of the other divines we've only maybe getting um, 50. 1,000 is pretty good. So, another thing you can do is seasonal divines, if you own any of the seasonal divines, and I will show you, I believe I only have one of the seasonal divines. Okay, I think it's spring. So this is spring. Now, right now on the game, it's summer, okay? But whenever it's, whatever season it is, if you have spring, summer, autumn, and winter, or maybe you only have one of those seasonal divines, he actually will give you 5,000 equus when you log in um, each day. So that's quite a decent little mine, you know? So every time it's spring on the game, I will get 5,000 equus per day from him. So that's um, quite a useful one. Um, if you own a Croyus, it produces Aquas instead of droppings. Now, I don't own one, so I'll just quickly show you it in case you haven't seen it before. And it is possible to get these. I've been trying for years, though, so... Um, so, Croyus is a divine horse that produces money instead of droppings. On the 13th of every month of the site's update, Croyus will give its owner one pass, but only if the owner logged in the day before, and if... 13th um, of the moon falls on a Friday then he'll give you two passes and every month one horse among those named junior crosses is turned into your crosses. So basically um, you have a chance of getting this divine if you at least have one horse on your account named junior cross. Okay so the next one I'm going to talk about is Grefell. I actually think some of my Grefell might be ready to use so let's see. So we've got three here. Um, actually, I need to look for the ones that are in heaven. There we go. Okay, so I've got four of mine are in heaven right now, so try and revive these. Right. Going to use some of those. So basically, with a Grefell, um, if your horse lived for at least 30 days from birth or rebirth, you receive two diamonds and 20,000 equus if you send them to heaven. So I sent all of these off um, to heaven already, so well, this one we're going to send to heaven now. So you can see that we got some equus from that, and I'm just going to revive him with the Pandora's box. And this one he's sent to heaven, so we're going to get another 20,000 equus, and we're just going to revive them as well. Send this one, so there's another 20,000 equus and revive that one. I don't know if we have enough to revive the rest of them. Might have to go and get some more Pandora's boxes. So, we'll go to the black market. Or not the black market, the item exchange. So this is another one to be aware of. Um, you can sell items in the black market for Equus as well. So maybe if there's any that you don't use, you might want to avail of that because it can be you know, quite good, especially if you've got quite rare items at any point as well. Now I'm going to see if I can find any for Aquas. No, they're kind of a bit expensive and they're not many. There's not many on offer at the minute, so I'm going to have to come back to that. So another thing you can do is put Polodius Parchments on your horses. Now I'm going to see if I have any that have a Polodius Parchment. This one doesn't, but we're going to put one on. Okay, so the Plotus Parchment, every day your horse will produce equus instead of manure. During its whole life, you will earn a little money to improve your daily life. Each bit of manure is changed into 40 equus. Therefore, a horse who usually produces four bits of manure will earn you 160. So, I can use this item. So, basically, if uh, we put this horse... Okay, he's under yet, so we're going to feed him a lot. And we're going to age him once, and you'll see what I mean. So, down here, he's produced 20... Uh, or sorry, 200 aquas yesterday instead of manure. So if you have a lot of horses with that, it'll add up. Um, you can also send horses to the safe haven as well. So I'm just going to see if I can find just a foal that we can send just to demonstrate. It's not; It doesn't go for a lot, but unicorn ones will go for a little bit more. Okay. 
so we've got a little trotter full here so basically all we have to do to send this away is click here click sell and cl click place in the safe haven so the safe haven is an alternative sales and you'll win 2000 equus by putting the horse there so we can place it into the safe haven but be aware you cannot bring it back after you do that it's gone for good once it goes in there um, another thing you can do as well is to invite players so if you invite players you get 2000 equus for every guest who you invite, invite who registers but this is max to once every 24 hours so that's another way to get equus there as well um, another thing you can do is go on to players pages who have ufos on their profile pages because sometimes there'll be items or you know things from the shop or bmi and you might be able to sell some of it or just use some of it so that can be quite good as well and don't forget your question center okay i use my meadows for leather all the time because i find that okay it takes a long time but it's most equus i get in a lump sum so i quite like that so be aware of that it can be a very good thing to do and being uh you know, using your workshops as well and you can estimate the profitability of production and you can do that for both small, medium and large workshops. You know, you can um, sort it out into the average profit per hour and so forth as well. You know, we can look at what's going to make us the most per hour and what's going to make us the least and so forth. So do use your workshops and your meadows. Um, and also, as I mentioned just at the start, be aware of the partnership offers, you know, where you can get um, a little bit of aquas for watching a video. Now in terms of keeping your costs low, okay, make sure you're buying horses at reasonable or cheap prices and do take into consideration if the horse is going to earn you more than it costs in its lifetime. So if you buy a horse that's a bit, you know, per, um, you're probably not going to get a lot from it, you know. There's no point in buying a really cheap horse and expecting that really cheap horse to become your skiller or your competition horse you are better generally buying cheap horses that aren't going to be that useful and selling them on for a little bit more rather than holding on to them and because they may not make you very much and the other thing is try and get a uh, reasonable or cheap covers from stallions and don't just be breeding horses for the sake of it think about what you're breeding if you're breeding a uh, you know per gp mare and you're using a fantastic stallion you might be paying a lot for that covering and the foal might sort of be average and it might not be worth doing that so be aware of obviously what sort of gp is selling for what price so if you're going to do something like that is make sure what you're selling is worth selling um, so think about what you're doing before you breed anything also with the introduction of the vet fees if you have over 250,000 reserve the vet fee is going to cost you 2500 equus not including the covering price so if you go for the most expensive covering fee which is 7500 and then you add on the 2500 equus that's an expensive fall so you know be aware of those sort of things um the other thing i think as well is try and board in good ecs but cheap ecs as i said earlier you want like a decent earning from your lessons and you don't want to be spending an absolute fortune so i'll just demonstrate what I mean by this. So we've we bought that horse in like a reasonable EC. Now we could board in the most expensive EC. So let's just try and sort this by the most expensive. So here's the most expensive we can find for three days. And the lesson price is 47. Now the other one that we boarded in was 32. Now you just work out whether that was really worth that. Um, in the long run I'm not so sure if that's going to be if going to be worth it really. So just kind of get a balance with them. Um, you could use your own EC to board your horses as well, but you maybe you know don't want to do that because then you're using your own in stock items to feed your horses, such as the fodder that you have, um, and you're going to have to obviously provide all the benefits for boarders when you do that. And you might not want to do that, so maybe you do want to use outside ECs for that. Um, also, don't do ultrasounds on pregnant mares unless you need to. Um, I actually think it's one of the most pointless things to do if you really, really, really don't need to check what the foal is. So don't use ultrasounds unless you really need to. And you can store your aquas as well um, quite handily if you don't want to have to you know, spend a lot on covers. If we 
you could buy fodder or you could buy wheat. So if you don't have a lot of equus, you could just use the fodder because the fodder goes up to 10,000. But if you have a lot more equus, it's a lot more sensible to go into the resources and go down to wheat bran. Because wheat bran to buy is one aquas for one unit and it is to sell, it's one aquas for one unit. So you're not losing any money there and I can go up to 100,000. So I can buy that, as you can see. So that costs us 100,000. And if I want to get that money back, I can do so. So all I would have to do is go back and click 100,000. And I'm going to get 100,000 straight back. So that's a very handy thing to do um, as well. It means you can, you know, if you get your Equus below 10,000, then your covering for your vet fee is only going to be 100A. So buying and selling horses in the auctions um, can be good for another reason. And in general, if you go to buy, okay, if we're bidding in auctions, the best thing to do is to bid in increments of one equus because then you're only going up on one equus every time and it saves it on the long run so that can be something to do um, in auctions and it is you know helpful in that respect and obviously one of the biggest things I actually think is generally this is honestly the truth use the advanced search when you're looking at horses to buy or when you're looking to figure out how much your horse might be worth selling because you can use this to look at a certain breed you can use it to look at certain genetics so you know if you only want to look at ones over a certain amount you can use it to look at a certain age as well you can look at um, certain coat colors okay um, gender as well and you know, whether it's pure or part bread. So use those features because it will help. Now we've not managed to bring anything up there, but in general, um, these things will be helpful in, in finding what you're looking for and to get a rough idea of the range of prices that those are gonna be. And I generally tend to find that horses are cheaper in auctions so if you can buy some horses in the auctions and then sell them in the direct sales, I find that people who don't want to spend the time going through the auctions will buy them in the direct sales from you for a little bit more. And sometimes it's better to wait. Um, when you're putting multiple horses out um, in the sale, sometimes you can flood the market too much. Sometimes you're better to sell a few at a time and to kind of let people pick them up. So maybe not put 300 horses all into the sales at once, maybe put 20 or whatever. Um, and it means that you haven't flooded the entire market because sometimes when people have too much choice, then they're not willing to, to buy basically. Uh, and one other thing I'll just mention, and this is, I'm just gonna go look for my frost divine again. So, if you visit the page of somebody's frost divine, so you don't have to own the frost divine, okay, you can defrost it. And sometimes when you defrost it, you will get um, a hypnos blanket, which you can use to save on EC boarding. But do be aware, obviously, if you're using a hypnos blanket and you're not boarding the horse on an EC, then you don't get the lessons. So you can't get aquas from that. But if you don't want to do lessons at all, maybe you just want to do competitions and keep um, a blanket on them you could do that because it'll um, help to save aquas in that respect so that's kind of my general thoughts on you know earning aquas and there's a lot of other ways you can probably make aquas as well as i said feel free to share any other tips that you have and there are a lot of divines now um some of them that do give you a little bit aquas maybe instead of other items or skills or whatever but that is generally some of the best ways I think to earn Equus on the game. So thank you to PonyLover972 for requesting the video. I hope you still love it today, Scrubs. Bye!